Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well. As always, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be going through my top five pieces of advice for beginner guitar players. Now when I first started this channel, and um, maybe up until recently as well, I've always been under this illusion that I've always been under the, the, the microscope by these top-notch guitar players. But because there's such a, a wealth of uh, fantastic guitar players out there, it's very easy to just open your phone and you can you can start scrolling and then you'll come across like 20 different guitar players who are all tapping away and picking at 300 BPM or whatever and, and doing crazy stuff up and down the neck. It's very easy to be under the illusion that everybody plays like that, right? Um, which sort of made me feel a little bit daunted um, and a little bit under the microscope when I started doing this. But what I didn't realize is quite a lot of you guys who have subscribed to me um, are actually quite new to this. Um, a lot of you have, have messaged or left comments saying like, I've been doing this for only about a year now and I've been learning like some of the uh, some of the stuff that I, I like to cover and stuff like that uh, through my lesson videos. So I wasn't aware just how many of you guys are actually sort of new to this. I've only been playing for, for a year or so and stuff like that. So with this video, I wanted to share sort of my top five, like I said, bit, bits of advice um, for you guys who, have, um, who are maybe absolutely smack bang new to this or have been playing only for a little bit. This video isn't just for beginners either. There might be some stuff in here if you've been playing for a little while now that you may not have thought about. So um, if you've been playing for maybe sort of the same time as me, uh, which is coming on to around 16 years now, I think, uh, feel free to stick around and you never know, you might find something of use to you. So after playing guitar for around 16 years now, like I said, um, and being a guitar teacher for quite a while now, these are the things that I like to share with my students quite early on uh, when they start first start having lessons with me. And the things that I probably would have wanted to know about myself or been taught uh, way back when, when I was starting to learn guitar. So here we are, number one. Number one is learn to pick properly. Now that goes without saying. Your pick and your picking hand is the driving force uh, behind all guitar playing. So it's really, really important to get that right. And there's a couple of factors involved here. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how well you can do over here and, you know, stretchy sort of shapes and, and, and weird and wonderful chords and stuff like that and patterns. Without a good, strong pick attack and, and knowing what you're doing with the pick, it, it, it absolutely means nothing. So the first and foremost thing that I would share with you is um, learn to hold the pick correctly. Now, there's, there's no one set way of doing this. And what I do is I give people the general outline of how to hold the pick. Um, but then you can sort of make it your own from there. But there are some do's and don'ts, so, I, so I'll run through them with you now. So with a pick, I always recommend holding it between your thumb and your first finger, okay, only. Your other fingers, you want them fanned out the way. If they start coming in like this, you're gonna start knocking the strings and generating unwanted noise. So keep those fingers nice and fanned out the way, okay? And all picking is gonna come from the wrist. I know it looks like on the, you know, the, the live videos and all that stuff that they're giving it all that, but a lot of it's sort of like a stage act. A lot of good picking, it all comes from the wrist. The best analogy I've got for that is you, when, if you were to pick up a pen and start writing your name, what would you write with? Would it be your arm or your wrist? It'd be your wrist, right? Okay, so the articulation all comes from the wrist. The other thing I would say is try and keep your pick nice and parallel to the string, okay? Try to avoid slashing through it. Now, when you start speeding up, especially if you're starting to get into like metal and stuff like that, a slight angle forward or backward, depending what kind of pick you are, um, is, is absolutely fine. But for the most part, I like to keep my pick nice and flat because if you think about it, you know, if, if, if that's the pick right there and here's the string, if you turn it, you've got all that to get through and it's going to sort of delay your notes just, just by a touch. And also you're going to get this sort of real sort of scratchy, swishy, swishy sound, which to me is just really undesirable. It can, it can be quite cool when um, certain guitar players using it, it's got that really scratchy attack. But for this stage, you want a nice, clean, articulate playing. So by keeping the pick nice and parallel within reason, um, that's gonna give you a nice articulation. This also means finding the guitar picks that are right for you. Now, there's no right or wrong here, but there are some, some basics, I guess you could say. I generally recommend everybody starts with a 0.73. Uh, the Jim Dunlop stuff, okay? Uh, the, the yellow picks, you see a lot of guitar players using them. They're sort of like a nice sort of middle ground. And what I would do from there is I would go up or down from there depending on your style and preference. The idea with picking I've always found is it's way easier to make the guitar sound good if you play nice and light as opposed to bashing it and playing really heavy. Now, sometimes I have got quite a heavy hand. I'm, I'm aware of that. So I do have to rein myself in quite a bit. Personally, I use 0.88 picks. I used to use the 0.73s, but the 0.8 just gives me that little bit of extra bite that I need for when I'm digging in doing all like the, the heavy metal stuff. The other thing coming away from that is once you find the guitar pick that's right for you, try and stick to it. 
If you're dancing around lots of different picks constantly, you're constantly gonna have to be changing your technique, even if it is just a small amount. So try and stick to the to the, the pick size that you enjoy using and keep on top of it as well. Order in bulk, don't go and buy one because the end does wear out. At the end of the day, you're, um, you're whacking plastic against metal strings with windings, yeah, so it is gonna grind down. Sometimes I find if I've been playing for a while, or a couple of days, whatever, I think, hang on a minute, what's going on with my articulation here? But, um, you know, I'll, I'll look at the pick and I'll be like, all right, it's, it's all ground out. Um, toss it in the bin, get yourself a new one with a nice sharp point on the end. So that's the fundaments of picking that I give everyone. It's just between the thumb and first finger, have the, the most pointy part at a 90 degree angle coming in from your thumb. So when you're coming into the strings, the pick is facing inward. You don't want it starting to go outward because you're gonna be picking with the blunt side, side of the pick, okay? And another thing as well, try and have within reason as less of the pointy part shown as possible as well. If you're holding it like that, it's, it's gonna end up going across the room. Try and get a good grip on it. Don't grip too tightly, but the less of that point you have shown within reason, okay? Um, the more sort of a secure grip that you're gonna have on the pick and you're not gonna be worrying about fiddling around with it and having to keep bringing it back into position. So that's number one. That's uh, all about holding the guitar pick correctly. And um, like I said, it is the driving force behind whatever you do here. I've had to rebuild my pick in so many times because I was holding it wrong, okay? Um, which has been a, a bit of a nightmare for me personally. So I just really, you know, encourage everybody to get it right the first time and work on it from there. Because like I said, it, it's the driving force behind your plane. So you're gonna wanna get it right early on and use good technique. So the second piece of advice that I've got for you guys is learn the uh, the power of your wrist and your posture, okay? This is really important and it gets overlooked a hell of a lot, okay? Your wrist, the angle of it when you're playing guitar is really gonna affect and, and control how you go into things like chords, uh, scales, runs, anything that you do. Learn how your wrist interacts with your thumb positioning, okay? I've had it so many times where I've taught people um, bar chords. It's, this is especially people who've been playing for a little bit and they've been doing open chords for a little bit, which is all thumb over the neck kind of thing. But then when they start to learn bar chords, they're so used to this thumb over the neck thing that it's just literally impossible to do. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't get a, a bar chord or, or a bar right the way across with my thumb over. Um, so learn how to pivot your wrist depending on what you're doing and let your thumb move with your fingers. A lot of people seem to think if they keep the thumb in one set position, it's just all the work comes from the fingers. It's really not the case. A lot of the frustration I've seen in guitar players, especially when it comes to runs and scales and things, is they just can't get the reach and the stretch. Like I said, if you've got that thumb over the neck, you know, when you're trying to play a, a scale top to bottom, it's just gonna be really difficult for you. You know, it sort of really results in these the crowded fingers. When you're running things like scales, you want your thumb nice on the back of the neck and you want it to sort of come down, okay? And what's gonna help you do that is look how my wrist has got this sort of swan neck angle kind of going on with it. Now, if my wrist comes inward, range gone. Okay, and I have to remind myself of this all the time. So again, it's not a case of one size fits all. You know, when you're doing your open chords down the bottom, thumb over the neck all day long is absolutely fine. Bends as well, your thumb, you know, it, it, coming over the neck, that's your anchor point for bends. If you don't keep your thumb over the neck when you do a bend, especially when you're pulling toward the floor, you know, watch what happens. You know, that's your anchor point. Okay, so it's all about learning how your wrist and thumb need to be for each sort of thing that you're doing. So the rule of thumb, so to speak, is like bar chords and things, thumb on the back of the neck. If it starts coming over, you're not gonna get them, okay? Open chords and, and big bendy sort of leads and stuff like that, yeah, get the thumb right over it. It helps with expression and it sort of gives you a bit of a, um, gives you a little bit of a, a, an anchor point, especially when you're doing bends and stuff like that. Your wrist is really gonna control absolutely everything you do and that ties in with your, your posture as well. Now I've probably ruined my back playing guitar from bad posture. Okay, because you, you're constantly sort of like hunched over the instrument or I found myself to be constantly hunched over. Okay, look how tight my shoulders are. My, my shoulders in the morning when I get up, um, they feel like they're like that and I have to like <laughs> get them down, right? And that is from just bad posture when it comes to playing guitar because I, I play a lot, it, it's my job. The one thing I would say, tying in tandem with, you know, your wrist wants to facilitate what you're doing here. Set yourself up for the best chance of success of not ruining your back by trying to keep your back straight. Go and watch Matt Heffy from, from Trivium play. I'm not really a Trivium fan, as a lot of you know, but one can't deny that 
that guy has technique and posture spot on. If you go and look at pictures of that guy, when he sat, he's so upright like an iron board. And, um, you know, he, he he's even got that special guitar strap design for him, which um, even though it might not be aesthetically, you know, what everybody wants, it probably saves a lot of uh, shoulder and back issues just from the way it's designed. That leads on to another thing as well. Try, try and keep the guitar straight as well. There's this temptation to sort of let the guitar come like this. Now, if the guitar is like this, the strings are going to be ever so slightly out of pitch, so you're not going to have true, uh, true tuning, I guess you could say. But also, look at all that weight on, on my wrist. Your wrist wants to move freely up and down the neck. If I've got all that slab of maple or ma mahogany or whatever it is like lying on my wrist, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really restricted here. This ties in massively with any of you guys who play a flying V most of the time, like I do. I absolutely destroyed my playing through using a V because... I was sat like this, and the temptation is to, because the neck is so far away, let the guitar come back on you. And I'd be wondering, I'd be like, why the heck is my arm tiring out? And it's like, look at all that weight, yeah, that's like sat on my arm. I've just literally got no, you know, I'm, I'm so restricted in what I'm doing here. So if you are going to play with a flying V, um, try and keep it nice and straight if you can. You know, and, and sort of keep your shoulders down and stuff like that. Try and avoid sort of tensing up. You want a nice looseness when it comes to guitar playing. And the other thing that came with the Flying V as well is not only was I, you know, was the neck coming back on me. I was sort of hunching over it like this. And look how flat it ended up. Then what happened is I'd try and go to play standing up and I'd find that my, my pick attack was all wrong. Why? Because look at the angle that I'm picking at now. Because my picking hand was angling back, when it came to standing up, or even playing normal shape guitars like this, I found that all my muscle memory was just out because it wasn't used to picking in it in a straight fashion. So there's just some things to be aware of when it comes to your, your actual posture when you're playing guitar. It will control everything, even if you don't realize it. So that would be my second piece of advice to you guys. If you're struggling with something, especially when it comes to runs and chords like that, have a look at your wrist. Yeah, see what position it's in, okay? You know, if, if you're trying to run a scale and you get an absolutely no reach and your thumb is over the neck, well, think about it. Drop the wrist. Yeah, it keeps your fingers nice and fanned out. Look how I've got all that reach now. Yeah, look how limited that was. I can barely get across three frets there with the thumb over. If I bring the wrist down, look at all that stretch that I've got now. Yeah, so I'm facilitating my fingers by good wrist position and good thumb position. So my third point now, which is going to come as no surprise to you guys, is don't neglect music theory. Okay, a lot of you guys may not want to hear this, okay? But everybody who you enjoy listening to on guitar is using it in one way or another. You know, Kiko Loraro said about Damon Stain, he doesn't know music theory. I beg to differ, he just knows his version of it. Megadeth's chord uh, structures and things like that are way too clever and complex to just, you know, put, put your fingers down and, and, and uh, you know, oh, that just came out, do you know what I mean, by a fluke? Dave has got an awareness of... of of what chords sort of go together, but he just knows it in his own way. So everybody is using it in their own way, whether they know it or not. And you guys probably are already. You probably know that going from this chord here to this chord here kind of works. Do you know what I mean? And that's no coincidence, okay? There are reasons and things behind it. Now, when I started learning, I shied away from it. I was mortified to find maths, basically, uh, in guitar because I'm, I'm not really, uh, you know, I'm not really intelligent, okay, when it comes to like academic things like maths and theory and stuff. And I, I was mortified, you know, when I was about 14, 15, or whatever, when I first started learning. And I shied away from it from, for years, and I, I really stunted my playing because of that. You know, you teach a metal guitar player a, a power chord and how to downpick on, on the bottom string, you know. That's, uh, f for a guy like me, that's all I needed, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I kind of really held my playing back because I didn't, you know, learn simple things. So the basic things that you would want to know, um, you want to know your, ba your basic box position scales. You know, you want to learn your pentatonic, your blues scale, your natural minor, your major scale, okay, and your major pentatonic, okay? Uh, you want to know your basic chords. You want to know your bar chords. If you, if you learn to do bar chords, they're going to unlock the entire fretboard. You can move these same shapes up and down and get so many songs out of it. You know, for all those who struggle with bar chords and stuff, because they're not easy to begin with, if you look at the way the guitar is designed and the way it's tuned, it's designed in a way so that we can bar our finger across and get these notes. Yeah? So, you know, it, it's almost a kindness that all these notes are in a row here. If the guitar was tuned any other way, 
we'd have to be doing that, you know, to access all the notes that we need to get these these simple chords that just come over three frets, okay? So learning those right there is absolutely king. The other thing that you probably want to have as well is a basic knowledge of how the fretboard works and where the notes are. And just take it one string at a time. There's loads of lessons and stuff like that online um, and loads of ways that you can approach, you know, learning the notes on the fretboard, okay? But in the beginning, you'd probably at least want to know what the notes are along the sixth string. And the cool thing is if you learn the notes on the sixth string, you've got the, the first string as well. So that's two strings taken care of because they're both tuned to the same note, right? They're both tuned to E's provided you're playing in standard tuning, obviously. So then you've only got four strings to worry about. And the things that that's going to unlock for you as well is, is your root notes. So you can move your, your chords around, okay? So we've got a G major right here because my root is at G, third fret, sixth string. You know, if I take that major shape all the way up to seventh fret, my, my root notes changed to a B now. So now I've got two chords. Yeah, so that means, hang on a minute, if that shape times the 12 notes that I've got available to me, that's 12 chords. Then you've got the variations on those chords, major, minor, minor, seven, seven, one, and so on and so forth. So it really does open up the fretboard. And what it does is it gives you a confidence when it comes into your chord playing, your lead playing, whatever it is you want to do, your rhythm playing, because you know where you're going for and you know where you're going to be going next as opposed to just chancing it. And I guess this is why guitar is such a people-friendly instrument because um, any you can teach anybody, you know, to to pick up and play. You can teach them to put the first finger here and the third finger there, and you're going to power chord and stuff like that. You don't need, need music theory in, in order to start playing. That's why tabs are the devil, right? Tabs are great because you can teach somebody to play in, in you know, in five minutes with a tab, you know, it's just like lines of the strings, numbers of the frets, that's it. That's the code crack. But at the same time as that, unlike with other instruments, you're, you're not learning the notes and the keys and things like that, that are actually making up these riffs and making up these songs. You know, a lot of the time people learn Metallica stuff and they go, oh my God, it's it's the same stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's because it's all in E minor. They're using the same chords over and over again. And, and it, it's the same sort of toolbox approach. They like that key a hell of a lot, right? So they're gonna, be, those chords are gonna be reoccurring. Wouldn't it be nice to know where those chords come from? You know, so, so you can do the same. I think the turning point for me, because I, I avoided them for ages. There, there was two turning points. I was in my lessons and I, they were in classes. There was a guy next to me and my guitar teacher. He said, right, I'm gonna give you guys like three chords, come up with a riff. He said, uh, your, your first chord is uh, E5. And the guy next to me went like that. And I went, then he went, the, the next chord is uh, D5. And the next guy went like that. And I was like, he goes, and then your next chord is uh, C5. And then the guy next to me went like that. And I was like, okay. And he's like, you got them jazz? And I'm like, no. Do you not know where they are? No. It's just like, this is three years into your lessons now. Why haven't you took this on board? So that was one of them. I'm um, really showing myself up, I guess. Because uh, that is really basic, basic stuff right there. And the other one was um, watching the, uh, the Death Magnetic stuff in 2008 when uh, The Fly on the Wall, for you Metallica fans, if uh, you remember when they put Death Magnetic out, they had loads of like uh, the making of each song come onto YouTube. And I remember there was a video where uh, where James was going to Kirk, I think he was saying like, um, oh, it, it starts off on like G, then down to F sharp, down to F, back to F sharp or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, those guys know it. <laughs> Just like, well, okay then. <laughs> you know, I, I should probably, um, I should probably learn, you know, at least my basic sort of root notes along the sixth string at least. And then, and then bring it onto the fifth string and then go from there. So yeah, bottom line is don't screw up your playing by not learning some basic music theory fundaments uh, like I did, okay? Um, and then taking it from there and, and, and investigating as much as you want to thereafter. It's gonna give you a good, confident foot in the door um, when it comes to learning the instrument. So the fourth piece of advice that I've got, here's another one that gets overlooked massively, is uh, don't neglect the metronome. So for all those who don't know what a metronome is, it's the little click track that you've heard um, when you've seen bands either recording or maybe you guys have got one on your phone or you've seen the, the one that's on Google, you can go on Google, type in metronome and one, one will come up. It clicks away at uh, a certain BPM, whatever you set it to, so 70, 80, you know, whatever. And uh, it enables you to, to play in time and, and accurately and really work on getting your chords or your notes, whatever it is you're working on in the right spot. It is the most powerful tool especially for all you guitar players who want to play fast and all that sort of stuff. It's the most powerful tool that's going to help you achieve that.
okay? Now, when I was 18 and Zach Wild hit, and, um, you know, he, he hit my life on a f I heard he was picking every single note. I was like, how the heck do you do that? And the guy just put in hours and hours and hours and hours of just playing with a metronome and playing every single note. Playing every single note picked, okay? In time with a metronome. The more and more you play with a metronome, the more confident your playing is going to become. And the less disjointed your playing will become. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you'll be playing a riff or a a run or whatever, and it just feels really disjointed and not together. You might be playing it in the, the two sections or two or three or four sections that you learned it in and you're struggling to get it all together. Yeah, well, you might be like a bit of a pause gap between phrases and stuff. It's the metronome that's gonna help you connect the dots. Even if it is something as simple as moving one chord to the next. Okay, I've got to remember that this channel is almost like a documentation of my progress since I started taking uh, guitar playing seriously. When the first lockdown hit and I lost my job and I thought, right, what is that I want to do with my life now? I need to start from scratch. The first thing I thought of is, well, I, I never want to be as far away from guitar playing that I was because I literally had no time to do it. So I just started by picking up the guitar and just seeing what I was capable of. And it was a mess, quite honestly, an absolute mess. So literally went back to the drawing board and I just started playing along with the metronome. I just start playing certain riffs that I enjoyed nice and slow. And, and, and that's the important thing there, nice and slow, okay? Always start off slow with the metronome just to find where you're at. Don't go, oh, I reckon I could get this at 140. No, no, no. See how slow you can do it and then work your way from there. There's no point seeing how fast you can do it. Yeah, it's quicker to work out where your starting point is and then work your way up from there and, and see what's comfortable for you, okay? There's no ego here. This is your progress, okay? So don't lie to yourself. The, the metronome will be your best friend when it comes to tightening up as a lead guitar player, a rhythm guitar player, or as, as a musician as a whole, okay? When you're practicing chords as well, a lot of people struggle with moving one to the other, chord movement. They'll get the idea of how to hold different chords and stuff like that, but they'll really struggle with like getting one to the other in time. And so while you're working on going from C to G or whatever it is, you might as well have that metronome on at least, at least nice and slow to give you some sort of parameter for when you need to be making that change as opposed to just working on the muscle memory. Two birds with stone, one stone, man, you know what I mean? So it works. And you will be amazed to see the progress you'll make the more you play with that metronome, okay? I did it, like I said, when I was 18 and I want to play like Zach Wilde and I don't think I've even accomplished it to be honest with you, but you know, that was hell bent on that at the time. So I just sat down and did what he did, picking every single note with my scale patterns to the metronome. It must have drove everyone who was downstairs absolutely nuts, you know, but it's what you've got to do. And like I said, the metronome, it will be your best friend in terms of helping you to tighten up as a guitar player. But at the same time as that, it will be your worst enemy if you fight it. And as a matter of fact, screw that, you will be your own worst enemy if you fight it. The metronome can always go slower. So if you're struggling to get a riff or a lick or whatever, or a chord change, whatever it is, just slow it down. It will always go slower. And, um, you know, the, the, the results, they, they, they speak for themselves. So give it a go. So that's number four. Don't neglect the metronome. Whatever stage you're at as a guitar player, just get it on and um, give yourself something to work to rather than being your own parameter. So my last uh, piece of advice here, number five, is to keep an open mind, okay? Um, this, this comes down to genres, um, you know, styles of playing, techniques and stuff like that. I did the Metallica thing, he says, holding a Metallica guitar. Um, I'd, I, 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 I hardwired, so to speak, myself into that um, for years. That's the only thing I listened to. I was known when I was 14, 15, 16 as Jazz the Metallica guy. You know, and if, you, if, I've, if I was at like people's houses and people listening to music and my turn came around, everyone going, oh, here we go, Metallica. I was, I was the Metallica guy, okay, and I'm sure you know, maybe some of you guys out there may have had a similar thing or with a similar band or whatever. And that's all I listened to. And you know what? My playing really, really, again, I, I stunted my growth uh, as a guitar player because of that. Don't get me wrong. You know, it, it, it really wasn't music that I was relating to and it was speaking to me and I wanted to, you know, I, I connected with it, you know, and it really was a, a lifeline for me um, being that age and, and, and so impressionable when it comes to music and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it was the only thing I could do, <laughs> right? Uh, or even not do because there were certain riffs that I couldn't play. So, you know, after 
you know, get getting out of that and starting to find other bands. Yeah, getting into other stuff and learning that there's more to life than just just Metallica, believe it or not. Um, you know, other stuff came along for me. Yes, it was in the metal rock realm, you know, Alter Bridge, Black Label Society, but like my Valentine, obviously. Uh, God, Slipknot, Stone Sour, uh, all those guys, pa- Pantera, um, Asking Alexandria, that was a big one for me, Bring Me the Horizon. You know, start to, to branch out into other stuff. And then what's going to happen is if you, if you take that in through your funnel, then you've not just got like the, the one influence, right? Okay, you know, you've got a plethora of other bands, but still there's a little bit of a problem spot here, uh, which is obvious what that is. It's it, That's all heavy metal, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, if, you t- if you're just taking in heavy metal, all you're going to be pumping out is heavy metal. Keep an open mind. Screw what your friends say, okay? Well, you know, if you're being afraid of, being caught listening to Taylor Swift, if that, you know, if that ticks your box, you know, that sort of thing, or classical music or stuff like that. You know, there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure. There's a difference between uh, uh, bad music and music you just don't get into. That's another topic for another time. But there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure. And as far as I'm concerned, if you like it, you like it, okay? So, believe it or not, I don't just sit around listening to Bullet for my Valentine all day, uh, contrary to popular belief. Okay, I do a lot of their stuff on the, on this channel because I spent a lot of my my years um, learning their stuff, learning their technique, playing their songs, and, and you know it, it, it was just a style of guitar and, and music that resonated with me. And it's probably one of the bands that I do best when it comes to covers and, and stuff like that. So I've I've sort of um, maximized on that on this channel because there's a lot of Bullet fans and you guys have enjoyed my uh, my lesson videos or whatever. But you know, when it when it comes to like your own guitar playing, you need to listen to more things other than just that, believe it or not, if you want to be an all-rounded guitar player. You know, talk about guilty pleasures. There's no such thing. If you like a band, you like it. Enjoy it. Who do I like? 1975, okay? Hey, just lost <laughs> like 200 subscribers if this video gets that many views. Yeah, I like the 1975. Can't figure out why. I just like the 80s pop kind of thing. Go figure. I'm not going to question it. I just know that I like it. Music that really gets me going now is like compositional stuff. Thomas Newman, okay? Hans Zimmer, Howard Shaw, film soundtracks, stuff like that. Once you learn some basic theory and maybe progress it from there and, and modes and things like that, you'll really learn to start appreciating music on a whole other level. And what will happen is if you're taking that in through your funnel as well, it's gonna come out on the guitar. A lot of you guys know that I enjoy playing like the ambient, reverby, clean guitar sort of stuff. Um, a lot of that is rooted in my love of like like film scores and stuff like that. Thomas Newman, Shawshank Redemption, absolutely incredible, incredible soundtrack. The way that guy can sort of um, make major and minor work together so well and he just breaks all the rules, okay? Howard Shaw with his half tones. You go watch Lord of the Rings, that nasty chord that you hear in metal t- metalcore all the time, it's absolutely loaded with it, okay? And you start to pick these things out and you go, ah, the two worlds aren't too dissimilar. If you think back to... Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning. Where did all that come from? Cliff Burton. What did he enjoy listening to? Classical music, okay? Think, look at a song like Orion. Look at the intro to, to Damage Inc., okay? Look at um, all the triads involved as an, uh, uh, Anastasia pulling teeth. Is that what it's called? Um, it's all classically driven. And then going back one step further from there, think about Black Sabbath. Think about when Tony Iommi started to hit the, 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 the tri-chord. You know, and when he's him and Geezer Butler were, were, were messing around with that thing before heavy metal was a real thing. Geezer Butler was listening to Holtz, The Planets, okay? The, the track was Mars, The Warbringer, and it has that nasty flat fifth, you know, that nasty sort of metal chord, you know, that, that bands have, like, maximized on, like, Metallica and Megadeth and, and Slayer and all that sort of stuff. So it's all rooted in, you know, stuff from way back when. So this is really going to help you not become a one-dimensional player. And if you embrace other styles, you'll find that you'll just become a little bit more of an accomplished and satisfied guitar player rather than just hard, hardwired into, into doing one thing. You will find very quickly that chugs on opens, if that's your thing now, it will get old once you learn to start to do it efficiently. Okay, or, or fast noodly shreds and stuff like that, that that I probably couldn't even do, do you know what I mean? Um, I can say a lot more with two chords and a good reverby tone that personally for me, I mean, um, than if I was to learn some sort of fast Marty Friedman crazy exotic lick, okay? So 
that came from having an open mind when it came to genres and styles. So try to keep an open mind. That's my fifth piece of advice. So there you go, guys. That's my top five pieces of advice for beginner guitar players. I actually thought of quite a few more, but for the sake of video time and stuff like this, this has probably run way over what I intended it to be. So if you want me to do a part two or talk about something specifically, just fire away down in the comments and I'll uh, happily do that for you guys. There you go, guys. That's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something most importantly. And until next time, stay well, stay healthy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.